Okay, so we're just going to talk a little bit about hand tools, uh, what I use, and this is um, what I do have in my bucket. And um, I'm going to go through all of these uh, very quickly, individually, in a moment. Uh, there is one thing that is missing um, from my sort of like chisel collection, that is a joint and chisel or a plug and chisel. Um, which I, again, I do have one, but I don't tend to use it so much nowadays. So if I um, was to start off with obviously the, the main thing, uh, the brick trial. Uh, when I first started, I started with WHS. Uh, this is the London pattern, um, which was the first trial I had. And then I went to the, the wider ones, uh, which uh, a lot of bricklayers do use. Uh, this one, again, served me for, oh, this style I should say, not this one, but this style served me for quite a while. And uh, it was um, only, I would say, the last 12 years that I um, actually um, picked up my first Marshalltown, uh, or Philadelphia style one, and um, kind of a not look back i really do like this style now uh, you can see this one's quite warm this is uh, another one that i have in my bucket but you can just see that this one has like worn down just a, a little bit from there so it's now from 11 it's just gone down to about a 10 inch which is for me just right this one's slightly bigger um, which i bought off somebody hence uh, a little bit more on there and um, tried to scrub it clean it's um, a resin handle which um, is better in hot conditions and uh, again still nice good for block work and I'll just pick up a little bit more more. Uh, we have the pointing trowel which uh, if you look at the uh, repointing videos um, three and four you'll see me using this one just for filling the joints uh, again handy little tool and uh, always always in my bucket. I do have um, a nice sort of knife just for a little bit of um, uh, intricate work I would say when I'm filling really really small holes um, and again sometimes a plaster's tool is uh, a little bit better than this. Hammers, obviously just a standard claw hammer uh, again just for normal like when I'm doing little bits of like carpentry work and things but again obviously self-explanatory just for nails. And a lump hammer or club hammer. Uh, again, I find just the two and a half pound is much, much, much better for repetitive work. So if you're using like with a chisel, chopping out, uh, this one is just the right weight. And again, uh, when I come to talk about cutting bricks with a bolster, again, this is just the right uh, weight for me. Finally, in my bucket, I have a third hammer, which is my mallet. And again, this you can see being used um, when I use uh, when I do block work. Uh, mainly, I try to do thin joint block work. So, if you watch the first three videos on thin joint, you'll see me using this. Uh, I'm going to talk about levels uh, in a little while, but uh, boat levels. These are just used for soldier course. Um, you'll see in the video soldier course me using one of these and also just when I'm doing the, the gable knee as well just uh, for level on uh, crease and tiles. Um, this I use as well you can see that this used to be one of my old brick levels um, it fell off a scaffold I will come to that in a little while um, but rather than chuck the whole thing away I just cut this end off just so I could still get some use out of a bent level. Um, when we come to the chisels, uh, my comb chisel, pride and joy, car boot sale, 30 pence, was probably one of the best buys I've ever had. Uh, and again, use this nearly all the time when I'm doing any uh, work, sort of like chop and eight. And um, there should be a fourth hammer um, that we didn't look at. And that's because when the handle broke on that, I didn't replace it simply because I had this and I use a grinder more than uh, I do now. But a scutch hammer is a hammer with a comb either end and that's just for trimming bricks after they've been cut. Bolster, I only ever use this little 60mm bolster for cutting bricks. 
um, because when I cut blocks I'll use a saw and uh, a four inch bolster for a brickwork for me is too big and I find that when I used to use them those um, you'd end up sort of losing the corners of the bricks a lot so this for me is um, the ideal thing for bricks be careful that you keep the ends nice and trimmed this one needs trimming again this one does you can see those burrs okay because those they can fly off and they're like miniature bullets and they go everywhere joint nines <coughs> the one I particularly like is the Marshalltown and the 81 pattern I don't know if you can see it written on there 81 simply because that has a really wide radius on both sides and um, the smaller ones I find that when you join it up with those if you've got joints that are slightly bigger that will go in deeper and you'll get real deep shadows on your uh, mainly your cross joints you can if you've got bigger bed joints as well that go in deeper and it just makes the, the brickwork look uh, very shadowy when the sun comes around so a wider radius and you get a much much more even joint so when you have small joints and bigger joints they all look the same so that's the one I go for uh, you'll also see uh, a bevel in my bucket and that is obviously for when I'm cutting angles uh, mainly on gables and again you can see me using this on um, uh, the video uh, cutting a gable <laughs> funny enough and so again great thing um, to use when we come to corner blocks again we have the normal corner blocks just on brickwork and again you can see on the one of the last videos that went on um, the porch cavity walls you'll see these uh, on both ends of the, uh, the wall and um, but I do like these little wooden ones you can see here he's got quite quite a large return on them and these I specifically made these I call these my profile blocks and if I just explain what that is for if I use a straight edge you can see this fits nicely onto there so the line um, is tight onto that that straight edge. If you use something bigger, the line can pull round, can pull the block round, so the line won't be true on the side. So I do have four of these in my bucket, and they are specifically for when I use uh, my profiles. Always have two tape measures uh, because you'll always be using one, and if, as um, I'm sure happens from time to time you get grit in here or someone stands on or it just won't go back in one time uh, you don't want the rest of the day struggling with eight ones so you always have the emergency one in the um, bottom of your bucket so always have two tape measures standing knife again always in my bucket um, just make sure you have one that's retractable because you don't want to leave a a sharp edge in there when your hands delving in looking for something. Always have plenty of pencils and obviously a sharpener for um, obviously the square carpenter shape, um, shaped ones. Um, I always have my piece of wood for flush joint and again if you look at the video flush joint you'll see this being used um, for on bricks that are obviously I like reclaimed ones or with uh, an uneven arras you can't use a joint iron so you'll definitely want to be using a flush joint and this is the best way I find for you uh, getting a flush joint I also have my little tin and in my tin I have my tingle um, I think in the video you'll see that I used to use an old credit card um, but these copper ones are much 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 better uh, also in there you'll see that I have my um, additional combs for my comb chisel and at the bottom uh, there's a video going to be coming on shortly where you'll see me using this and this is what I use for a recessed joint. This is obviously for the bed joints and this is for the ones on the internal corners.
Uh, great little tool that is. Always have a brush just for finishing um, off your, your brickwork nice and light. What would be a real soft one? This one uh, isn't too bad. I've just uh, purchased a, a much softer one which uh, I'll be using in the coming videos. That's much better. And finally, when we come to lines and pins, you'll see that I'll always have my lines like this because um, if you have 50% um, of your line on each of these if you come to break your line accidentally you don't want to be joining it with a knot so what you're going to do is you're going to chuck away half of your line so I always have all of my line on one pin so it, if this was to break say three meters down the line I'll only lose three meters of line and again the thing I want to say about lines is and you want to be hitching them so when the line comes over over the top and towards you you want to be doing this you want to be looping it looping it like so and then put the head through the top and then you'll get what you call a hitch so if the line does fall on a scaffold that doesn't go all the way down to the bottom and uh, again I would always be looping it near the edge just so I get about that much line. Okay? And then all of this, what you've just seen, goes into my bucket. Now the bucket I have, I've had the same bucket now for 20 years. And uh, again, this is how I have my bucket. So if we just watch as I... So fill on the bucket. This is um, how I would uh, do it. I'd have my trowels in one section with my knife and uh, normally my brush which I'm going to put my new one in now so at the end of the day I could just quickly look and I knew straight away just by counting the handles if uh, anything was missing exactly the same with the handles I could just look and again I'm just looking for three handles and these are so quick and easy to get out of your bucket rather than have everything in your bucket and trying to uh, find whatever you're looking for and um, taking three times longer than this does and again a bit of a space in there so this is ideal for my boat level I'll put that in there I then have my metalwork section which is all my chisels and anything that is metal they all go in there and then I have the last section for all my bits and pieces and as I said my spare because this isn't going to get used um, very often because I'm going to use this one all the time until this one um, does uh, foul up one day so this will go in the bottom that will get ready to the top I then put my corner blocks in My pencils, just down one side, the other corner blocks. Then I have my tin, my standing knife, and my flush jointer. So then that leaves us with our line pins, and I like to put the line pins on the handle. And here we are hitched up as we uh, mentioned before. And I like to put that in there just to keep that. Um, so if they do get damp, they tend to dry out nice and easy there, rather than stuck in a bucket where they can uh, tend to uh, remain a little bit uh, damp. And again on this side, just do another hitch on here. So again, just remember how we did this. We just loop, put the head through, and there we have a hitch. So it won't uh, come off. So just move it round there once. Have a tape where it's going to be there. And again, you probably saw um, these are what I call my my braided lines. And um, 
if we just have a quick look at these these are a real nice braided line these ones you can see are a cheaper quality and I keep these ones and I use these ones for uh, just having like a guideline up the gable uh, one thing's maybe a little bit of setting out as well but actually for brick and two I won't use these ones I will use these ones okay so again just put that there and because these ones aren't going to be used for bricking I ain't too worried if they do end up because they're metal the pins are metal obviously I'll put them in my metal part of the bucket as well you may have seen this as well just a little story about this when this one fell off the scaffold when I was doing a chimney and bent it um, what I do now I have this here just for I used a small one just to demonstrate but I put my 1200 level in there <coughs> and so it's on the scaffold easy to use and that's how we use that right okay so now we come to uh, the levels and um, I have three different uh, sizes I use my 600 uh, this one you'll see being used a lot on the arches that I do just because it's nice and close uh, and easy to use uh, on I'll say a little bit of intricate work when you're raising like normal corners and that then again just the normal 1200 and uh, when I'm transferring levels if I'm not using my laser level I do have this 1800 one which again you can see is quite a lot cleaner than the others uh, it doesn't get used half as much one thing I will just point out is that you will never find any trial marks anywhere on any of my levels and that is because uh, as I tell everyone this um, is uh, probably the most expensive part of your hand tools so the last thing you want to do is um, keep banging it with a trowel or a hammer uh, because you'll just shorten the life of them now speaking of the life of your level these are previous ones that I had obviously I used this one for a while until I wasn't very happy with the, um, the bubble so I bought a new one but you can see that I never ever throw these away these I use when I'm doing floor screeds I'll just use them as little straight edges but you'll see in a lot of the videos uh, running in uh, definitely on running in uh, you'll see these will be used either end and uh, again if you can clamp these up they'll be uh, saving you a lot of time um, whereas you would like normally build small corners up you can clamp these up these are lovely straight edges you just mark your gauge on and then away you go so don't ever throw your old levels away they will come in really useful for small profiles That's the levels I have in here um, a square now this doesn't get used very often I have to say uh, simply because um, I will use um, my um, tape measures the 345 method you see this is quite a large one and um, so it's good just for checking really I would say not for um, practical use uh, not for like set them out and for smaller things um, on one or two videos you'll see these um, tool that I designed just for the twisted pair so you, you'll see this on uh, the videos twisted pair one and two and also on the twisted arch um, number one which is the pairs going up so you'll see this being used uh, obviously we do have the, the brand new ones as well uh, and again you can see they can be adjusted just to be square so they can be a much smaller um, square I would say for, for brickwork rather than using that larger one this one is for, for like internal walls I would say if you don't like stud work or uh, internal block work uh, you can put 
this up against uh, the main wall just to go 90 degrees off your internal wall so again that does have a use but you see how clean it is it doesn't get used very often other things I think are absolutely essential when I'm working are my brick grabs these just obviously pick up six bricks at a time and you just uh, nip them up and then walk them round and for me these are essential these used in conjunction with these for clamping up onto walls and that uh, again a, such a time saving device to, to do rather than build corners you can clamp this onto a wall make sure it's upright mark your gauge on and away you go so whenever I used to see bricklayers turn up and they would have uh, clamps on top of their buckets I had a, a good idea that they would know what they were doing and they were going to be pretty good the corner profiles as well that just clamp on and you have the special clip that runs up and down here just for um, running in so again no corners being used you just uh, clamp them up and start running straight away so again these are a huge uh, bonus I have two of these and uh, again they these get used uh, quite a lot and again you'll see these on uh, overhand work um, I think that's um, just putting the, the profile up and again on the porch the, one of the latest ones if you look on the cavity wall one you'll see this one being used on, on probably enough that as well so that's just a, a very quick overview of um, the tools that I use on a daily basis and uh, there are other things as well like the laser level again you can see that being used on the video uh, datums and uh, again a few other bits and pieces that I use but generally speaking all you've seen is my everyday use okay